Hi, my name is Dana and welcome to another reading vlog and this week we are reading The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. So I hope to try and read reread The Duke and I and The Viscount Who Love Me this week. Um, I'm behind on some of the read-alongs that have been going on for this book. So I really want to catch up and I figured the best way to start off this reading vlog and the best way that I know how is with a fun bath time read with me. Um, so I am only 30 pages in, um, so I reread the like infamous really sad prologue, which oh my poor Bean Simon, his father was absolutely terrible and I think the treatment of his mother was also if not worse, like she was literally just a womb that he used and he didn't give a shit about. Um, so that was rough to read. I was also like reading it. So today is eight, so it's like Sunday morning. Um, I was, I started my reread yesterday night, but I was like, for some reason exhausted and like fell asleep while reading this at like six o'clock. Um, and then I made dinner and I went back in my bed and I scrolled through TikTok. So there's that. Um, so I reread, um, so I guess I'm on like chapter three maybe, um, so you know, the introduction of the Bridgertons, and I, the, the first time I read this was via audio, the first two books, um, so I wanted to reread them physically so that I A, get a different experience, but also I think sometimes, um, I tend to miss things on audio, not that like I'm not fully reading it, but like you can zone out at times with audio and miss tiny details while still absorbing the whole story. And for some reason, I like never put two and two together that like, it's a, it's literally told to you that the Bridgertons are named in alphabetical order of their birth. <laughs> um, and I was cackling at that. So I'm like, how did I not get that the first time around? Um, so I, I really like, Daphne is like a nice, fun character. She's witty. I love the banter between her and her brother, Anthony. Um, and so we haven't fully gotten like the neat cute for Daphne and, um, Simon. Um, but I really love the interactions between her, the mother, Anthony, Colin. So I think that's gonna be fun. I'm excited to reread it and get to it. I obviously trigger warnings. There is the scene that is definitely non-consensual on the part of Simon later on in this book. I will be discussing it in this video. So I'm just preparing you for that now. I, when I first read it, didn't have the like knowledge to realize what was going on in that scene, but I think on the part on reread, I will be interested to see what my feelings are reading it. I think it is non-consensual, but it's built into the plot. Um, and I think because of that, you know, it's on Julie Quinn's part to have not written a story that backed her up in a corner to have had that be the conflict and the way that conflict is kind of resolved and worked out between these two characters. It's, you know, within a marriage, it's something we don't typically see. And it's, you know, it's interesting to discuss it. However, I do feel like it needs to be said that it is non-consensual. However, within the plot line, there is room to discuss it. Um, I don't think these books are condemned because of it. Um, they're, they're fun, they're well written, they're an enjoyable read. Um, I believe I gave The Duke and I on my first time reading it like three stars. I don't think it was like a new favorite for me when I read it, so um, there's that. And let's get on with the bath time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always so weird to like vlog myself in like my bathroom, it's like weird. But today's bath bomb is this really glitterly, glitterly <laughs> glitter Wonder Woman bath bomb that I got from Ulta Beauty. Um, it's kind of cracked up from travel. It was on sale, so there's that. Um, and we're gonna see how pretty it makes my bath. Okay, so bath time reading has wrapped up. I am on page 100, so I'm about to start chapter six. Um, I forgot how interesting the Simon stutter is for his character development and control is so important to him um especially in the way he chooses his words um and you know 
the view people have of him as being a rake and arrogant and terse is really because he doesn't want them to see his vulnerability and how insecure his father, his treatment of him has made him. Um, so it's so sad, but also so interesting to read. And I can't, you know, speak to the representation of having a stutter, but it was really fantastic to read it again. Um, I really enjoyed their banter. Just all of the dialogue is really fun in this book. Um, the back and forth between him and Daphne. Um, and it's interesting because I don't, I didn't remember. I knew that Mute Cute happened in like a hallway or a balcony but I forgot that it had to do with her trying to turn a guy down and her having punched him I think that was really fun but also really contrasting to you know this book being kind of received right now for it's you know a non-consent scene later on in the book being such like the conversation of this book right now and I think kind of it's starting from them meeting where she's you know, being kind of not assaulted, but berated by a guy wanting to like propose marriage and she's not interested. Um, and you know, Simon being like, the lady said stop. Um, so I think that's like an interesting point of discussion of like, if I was writing an essay about this book, I would totally be comparing contrasting the language of those two scenes and, you know, discussing the vulnerabilities of the language. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to read more, and yeah, it's a really quick read, so hopefully I'll be able to fly through this whole series before Christmas. That is the hope. <laughs> so I have read some more of The Duke and I. So I am on, I've read up to, I'm about to start chapter 10. Um, and we are getting a little bit more into Simon, his issues with not wanting to marry, not wanting children, and Daphne's beginning to see that, and it's coming into the light a little bit more. Um, and we also kind of have, like, the whole family scenes have been really fun. Um, they went, they had the whole family dinner, and then they went out to, like, I guess they were at, like, a park, and then, um, we have them all at this ball, um, and now Simon and um, Daphne have snuck out into the gardens and Simon is trying to persuade her not to because if they get caught in this situation, it's not something he wants to have to marry her because of this. And she's encouraging it because she's lusty after him. Um, I Yeah, I really like Daphne. She's really fun and spunky and like the whole family dynamic makes this super fun. I think I like Simon way more than I like Daphne. Um, she's, she's kind of like, you know, she's, she was a wallflower, but she's not anymore. She's not really. And so she's kind of got a, you know, a sarcastic-y kind of sense of humor. And I don't know, it's just a really fun book right now. Though the beginning is so sad and Simon's like inner turmoils are really difficult for him. Um, and, you know, we see him stutter in some situations where he's kind of uncomfortable and things are not things he wants to talk about. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying my reread and it's going by really quickly. So I hope I can get some more of this read um, either tonight or tomorrow morning and I'll let you know my thoughts next. So I've, it's been quite a long time since I've updated or read any more of The Duke and I. I just kind of put it down for other things for a while and yeah, but I picked it up and I've read a little bit more um, and I plan to try and finish it as now because it's now about to be December and I really want to read the whole series by the time the show comes out. That sounds daunting. <laughs> um, so I've gotten to the point where they are now betrothed and planning to get married. Um, and I feel like on this reread, that, that whole scene and debacle of them being found and her seducing him comes off really rough to read. On this reread, because of his, like, control is so important to Simon and Daphne 
pushes him to lose control a lot. Um, and again, like she says that she loves him and like, I don't believe it. Like it, she feels like a child saying, I love you. And she's infatuated with him. But like up until this point, they were friendly. Like it, it didn't seem like it had gotten there, like emotions wise. Um, but I am up to the scene where Daphne's mom tells her about the marriage night. And it's so funny because Daphne knows, like, I think she knows what's going on. And she's kind of been waiting for her mother to tell her about this. Um, and her mom's basically trying to say, like, you know, it's unpleasant to some, but, like, I liked it. <laughs> Um, and obviously she had eight children, so I'm like, a lot of was going on with Mr. Bridgerton. <laughs> um, but I really, I think I would love to see more of those scenes of female, like, mother figures, sisters, talking about sex to the heroine. Like, I think that's really important, because otherwise, like, these characters who are virgins, like, have no no way of knowing about anything um so it, it's a really important scene in this book that I really love that Julia Quinn included um but yeah I have read about 120 more pages and then I'm not sure if I'll be including the Viscount who loved me in this vlog or vlogging that as well but I want to do this one for the views no I'm just joking I'm not joking but I'm kind of joking though <laughs> I just want to correct that um, Daphne does not know what's going on with sex and wants to know more so um, I kind of realized I miscorrectly said that so yeah she doesn't actually know what's going on but would like to know more so yeah I'm gonna keep on reading and yeah so I have finally finished The Duke and I and I don't know how the sound is gonna be on this clip because I can't close this door and the dryer is on. So it's gonna be how it's gonna be. <laughs> um, so I I think I originally gave The Duke and I four stars when I originally read it. I am a much more critical reader now and I'm, I was very tossed up between two and three stars on this. I feel like this book goes downhill once they end up married. As soon as Daphne wants to take him out into the gardens and he ends up losing control I feel like I just lose all sympathy for Daphne and interest in her as a character um she's very young and naive and sometimes it's hard to read that character um I I do like Julie Quinn's writing I think she has a very propulsive way of telling a story that is enjoyable to read but I think I just had such a hard time with this this time around and the way Daphne knows what she's doing but then kind of goes into pity partying herself is really rough I think she needs more of a grovel at the end and it's really Simon who you know has to apologize for the fact that he turns her away um and the way he acted in that situation which I think they both reacted badly to all accounts so it's it's rough it's rough reading it um I'm very excited for the tv show I think Simon is going to be incredible he's already just like I really like him as a person and how he has interacted with fans thus far has been amazing um and I'm excited to reread the second book and finally finish the series. Um, I, I understand why people love this book so much. I really enjoyed it the first time I read it. And I think 2020, I've become a much more critical reader. And that is not a bad thing. And that is not a good thing. I just, A, am much more of a piggy bitch. And then B, I think besides the consent issues that this book does have, that are built into the narrative. This is about the trust between a married couple. And, you know, with that, the loss of control and how that ties into both of them as people. But I think 
plot-wise, <laughs> this book kind of falls apart pacing after they've been married, which is kind of a, also like a, a, a like interest thing because I would prefer a marriage at the end of a book. I think I prefer that narrative style of we meet, we have our conflicts and our love affair, and then marriage baby at the end of the book. Um, and we get like a, an epilogue where they've had multiple children at this point. Um, and it's, it's nice that like before their epilogue, she is not pregnant. I think that was a great choice on Quinn's part. Um, but yeah, please let me know your thoughts on The Duke and I. Are you excited for the Netflix show? I know a lot of people are just going to watch a show. So yeah, please let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.